Hey everyone, this video is part of the Hard House Debating Club's outreach initiative and we'll be posting different videos about different aspects of debate, so stay tuned. This video is going to be focusing on POIs. My name is Cindy and I'm going into my third year at U of T. My name is Varun and I'm also going into my third year at U of T. All right, so let's just get started. This video is gonna be divided into four parts. So first we're gonna cover what are POIs and sort of like the basic rules of them. Then we're gonna talk about how to make effective POIs. Thirdly, we're gonna talk about how to respond to POIs. Um, and at the end, we're gonna cover something similar to POIs called POCs. So first, what is a POI? A POI stands for a point of information and it's an interjection, usually a question that's given in the middle of another speaker's speech. There are some restrictions such as what kinds of questions can be asked and when, but at its core, this is what it is. And in order to give a POI, you can stand up or stick out your hand and the speaker will choose how to respond. So if you're the speaker being given a POI, there are three responses that you can do. So first is yes, second is no, and third is you can ask them to wait. And it's generally okay to make the POI giver wait until the end of your idea or your sentence. Although it's not a good idea to make them wait too long, uh, the normal guideline that I like is usually anything over 30 seconds is too long. And remember, as the speaker, this is your time and you have control what, over whether or not you wanna take the speaker. In usual university debating BP guidelines, the rule is give to, take to, which just means you should be giving to during other speaker speeches and taking to during your own speech. If you're the POI giver and you get declined, you just sit down or lower your hand. For courtesy reasons, um, don't offer a POI every five seconds because it's really distracting and doesn't really add any value to the debate. And one more thing, just remember that you can only give a POI to the opposing bench. This means that, for example, if you're opening government, you can only give POIs to opening opposition and closing opposition. You can't give POIs to closing government, who's on like the same side as you. So secondly, we'll be talking about when is it allowed to give a, give a POI. So there are two sections to this. It's when it's technically allowed and when you should really be giving them. So from a technical standpoint, we have to talk about protected time. So the very beginning and the very end of your speeches are what's called protected time. And during this time, the offering bench cannot offer you POIs because these are usually the times where you're either formulating your arguments or concluding, which aren't really good times to be offering POIs. So the official guidelines say it's not allowed. Usually in a BP speech, it'll be the first and the last minute. And outside of protected time, it's fair game for any member of the opposing bench to ask you a POI. That being said, when should you be really giving POIs is a completely other story. POIs need to be strategically offered in order to prov provide the best advantage to your team. So POIs can help you in three major ways. So firstly, POIs can quickly help you contrast viewpoints that are being brought up by the opposing bench. Now, the reason you do this is that it shows engagement in the actual argument being discussed, and it can often be the starting point for points of clash or your reply speeches, sometimes called whip speeches. Now, secondly, POIs can also allow your team to preempt your own arguments. Now, why would you want to preempt your own arguments? It's kind of like an early introduction. You want to have as much time as you can to actually present your arguments, and if you can get them out there faster, that's probably a little better because that means you have to do less of the actual explaining when your actual speech comes and you can get into the real analysis. So if you use a POI that correctly fits in to preempting your own argument, such as they, the opponent team brings up a point that you, one of your points immediately contests, you can do that. And as a result, you get that point out there fast and it's more introduced, at least in the judge's mind. And tactically, you can use a POI to quickly just call out a logical flaw in an opponent's argument. And at that point, it's an entire problem for the opposing bench because they have to use their speech time to clarify that logical flaw. That doesn't mean that you just call out anything and everything you see, but if there is a serious problem, you shouldn't have to wait for one of your speeches to come up to call that out because that's just a massive waste of time. If you can quickly call it out, they need to spend that time. And it also makes your rebuttal more effective when you come up the next week and say, we've already called this out in a POI, but let's expand on that. Now let's dive into what makes an effective POI. And we really think that the best way to um, like see an effective POI is just to see it in action. So Vera and I are gonna do a example for you. Um, and then we'll sort of talk about afterwards why the POI was so effective. Um, all right, so the motion uh, that we'd like to use today is this house would require the state to compensate individuals who face criminal prosecution but are not found guilty. 
Now over on the proposition team, it, it's a more natural argument is to immediately say this would require the state to be more cautious in choosing the people that they prosecute, knowing that they would have to pay for any mistakes on their end. In general, this would just result in less people being wrongfully prosecuted because less people are being prosecuted for smaller crimes. Now, a good POI to this would be, conversely, doesn't this mean that the state is now provided a direct incentive to finding people guilty? This is a good POI because it's relevant to the argument um, that was just said, and it's also short and to the point. You really want to keep your POIs concise and hit the point um, rather than rambling on and taking up more of the speaker's time. It also connects back to the point that I mentioned earlier about exposing a quick logical flaw. Like, obviously, this is something that if I was the speaker, I would immediately frantically be racking my mind into thinking, how would I respond to this? Because we have never covered this in previous argumentation. It's a direct logical flaw in our argument. And as a result, I'm gonna get thrown off, which makes the other side look good and me look a little unprepared, which is obviously the best situation you wanna be in if you were offering a POI. Okay, so when you're responding a POI to a POI, you're always in one of two situations. You know what you're talking about or you have no idea what was just said. Most of the time you'll be confident enough in your own argumentation that you can take a couple of seconds to think and it's always important to take a couple of seconds when you're offered a POI and think it through, but not more than like five seconds perhaps, and give an ap appropriate reply. So what I do is I always have a mental checklist. I first identify the direct point that they are contesting, which is obviously the argument that we've discussed before, and see if they've already made this point previously in their argument. Chances are if they've made the point earlier, you've probably already prepared some rebuttal on it in the course of your next speech. Next, evaluate whether their argument is already countered by the teams, by your team's points that you've already previously made. If they are, a bulk of the work's already been done for you. Refer to those points, maybe provide some more angles to look at it, and that way you can effectively count their POI because the base of your argument has already been made. If you haven't covered it yet, quickly think to your next speaker's arguments and see if they're going to deal with it. If they are dealing with it, that again takes the burden off of you and moves it onto the speaker that's already prepared really well for it. Say that they are going to cover this, preempt their point a little, maybe just give the point none of the explanation, and say that the POI will be addressed in more detail by your next speaker. And really hope that your next speaker gets the hint and actually addresses it, because otherwise you're in a bit of a hard situation. Now, a good response to the previous POI that we mentioned would be, let's just pull up a new point completely. It is far more resource efficient to just not prosecute cases with either less evidence or one that's already been inconclusive than to go through the hassle of going to trial. And as a result, we've already reconnected it to the point that we either would have made in the first place, or maybe my next speaker was already going to cover this point. Now, naturally, if this point doesn't occur to you in the middle of a speech, it's no big deal. POIs are meant to throw you off and there's no way you're gonna get every single one of them. But that's why you have a team of speakers who are already ready and paying more attention to the opposing speaker's arguments so that you can already have a response when your next speaker goes up. Now, what happens if you can't give the best answer in that moment? The first thing to remember is not to panic. If just because they've exposed a flaw in your argument doesn't mean that you've lost the entire debate, it just means this point needs a little bit more work. Take, a, again, a couple of seconds, go through that checklist, and if you still don't know what to do despite everything, try and connect the POI to a point that your next speaker will make. Or honestly, just fabricate the point. Your speaker will have enough time between you and the next speaker to develop that point a little bit more and actually go up and see it. Rely on your teammates because, again, debating is kind of a team thing at the end of the day. If you don't know something, your teammate will. And it's very rare that your entire team is clueless because they've already been thinking on their own. And if your entire team is clueless, then you know what, you've done debate, after you've done debating for a while, you just get good at just making things up on the spot, making up sensible things, but still making things up on the spot. And it's a huge skill that you'll just eventually develop. Um, an extension to POIs would be POCs and POCs are points of clarification. So they're sort of like, the sibling to POIs, but they're not exactly the same. They're meant for, as the opposition team, when the Gov model isn't clear enough or there are some key elements missing, and you really want to clarify those for the sake of everyone in the debate to get a cleaner round, or if there's something missing in the model that's really key to your case. We really want to emphasize that they are not meant as a way to get OG to take your POI by calling it a POC. That really decreases the quality of the debate, um, and it's just like, not a very nice thing to do and it doesn't make the round cleaner. So if we take the motion uh, example that we used earlier in the video, 
Uh, one potential problem could be that the Gov model doesn't include what compensation means or is going to look like. So a good point of clarification here would just be to ask, what does the government model stand for when it says, what does compensation mean? However, a POI would be, does this mean that the government intends to financially compensate? That is you offering a different angle and that's not a point of clarification. But if you are simply asking what compensation means, that is an example of a perfect point of clarification. And that's the kind of lens you should be looking at these through. Exactly. Um, so that concludes our video on POIs. Thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to stay tuned on the Hard House Debating Club page for more videos.